Hello and welcome to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I am Dr. Abstract and in this tutorial we would just like to introduce Zim. Zim is a JavaScript Canvas framework. It's available at zimjs.com. So here we are at zimjs.com and uh, we can code creativity. So Zim is great for making generative art and games, logos, interactive logos, amusements, data visualization. It's got a whole bunch of components, UI, UX, um, e-learning apps, etc. So a lot of the things that Flash is great for as well. Puzzles, infoactives, cards. And Zim is based on CreateJS. And that is what Adobe Animate exports to when it exports to the web, is it exports to CreateJS. Therefore, you can use Zim in Adobe Animate, which is great. Um, so I'd like to introduce you a little bit uh, to Zim. And one way to do it is to, to press on these and then you'll find out more information. We'll go to those in a sec. Let's go to the example zone, just have a peek there. So here are some examples. There's a Zim intro, which has nice code that you can see. Uh, these are mostly things that have just been released in Zim, although there are some full featured pens. Uh, this is a, a tool for, for making art with the Zim pen. There's games here as well, and some, some puzzles, some features. So after the featured ones, we have interactive NFTs. So a lot of these are more art based. Uh, we then have collections. So this is a good place to look for collections of what was new in Zim 10. So there's been 10 versions of Zim. Then there was Zim uh, Cat after that, and Zim NFT after that. Now we're on Zim version Zim, which is probably our final major version. Uh, there's particle emitters. So here's an example of particle emitters, for instance. Uh, this one, and they're all animating back to the sink. And we have snowflakes falling and fire. Whoa! And we're wiggling a little sink there to make the fire particle emitters change. Uh, woo! Anyway, lots and lots of examples. Uh, Zim has accessibility. There's motion controllers. So this is an example where a sprite is now following the mouse and going back and forth. And you can do it with a, joy a, a joystick or a game stick or key downs, mouse downs, etc. So those are all... Uh, there's parallax examples, lots of different components that you can use. There's a dial and a slider, and we can customize these with style as well, uh, pickers, etc. So those, this was done early on in Zim. There's, there's three times as many components now that you can check for in the various Zim docs as well, and then lots of other examples. These, these are uh, examples on CodePen. So um, that's a great place where you can go and see the code right there and you can fork it and try it out. Okay, so anyway, you get the idea. This is Zim made with um, made on the canvas and you can code using all these things in Adobe Animate as well. So if you want to find out more on how to make art, for instance, you would come in here uh, Zim has Generator, which is very much like Processing or P5.js, for instance, to give you this kind of processing effects. But you can also stamp them directly so you don't have to spend that time. These things can be dragged, etc. So there's all sorts of examples of generative art there. But when you when you go in, there's other, other art made in, animating to sound, etc. Uh, when you go into this, you can also press the more section here and find out what what is available to make art. So what are we doing to make art? And there's the generator, for instance. Here's some code to help you make NFTs. Here's the Zim pen. We have custom shapes. We have blobs and squiggles that have Bezier. This is, I know you've got this in, in Adobe Animate, but this is for the end user. So now the end user can handle blobs and squiggles as well. And we can animate along those paths. All the animation, there's the emitter, we can animate to noise and sound. So, um, what I was going to say is uh, the, the uh, blobs and squiggles were introduced back in the example. Let's just show you that. Maybe in these tutorials that are coming up, we'll, we'll definitely be adding some blobs and squiggles. But down underneath the, uh, the collections here, there, these were introduced in Zim Neo, so Zim 9. 
And as a matter of fact, here we are, those are squiggles, although they're sharp <laughs> sort of squiggles and we're animating along those. Uh, here's an example of dragging Dr. Abstract. Uh, and here's the path right here. We can drag along a squiggle. So you can do this too, and it just takes a couple lines of code and these are user editable squiggles. So now we're dragging along there. So all sorts of things to do in Zim that will really help you in Adobe Animate. So how do we do this? If we go to the code section, oh, maybe just before we go to the code section, there is a large learn section, which talks about using Zim right here in the browser. Without Animate, you can just do this, but we'll, we'll do this in Animate, because then you'll get to make use of uh, Animate's movie clips, etc. So uh, anyway, large learn section in here on how to code with Zim, lots of articles, lots of tutorials, etc. Blah, 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 blah. Um, however, if we go to the code section here, we can, uh, this is where we would normally copy the, sec uh, the copy the template, but now down below here under features, we have the Zim shim right here. So this is for people for animate. They would come here, you grab so some information about Zim shim, and here's a zip file right here that you can download and more tips on it as well. We'll add this series of create of tutorials to this page as well. But you wanna grab that zip file and that will give us a template that we can use inside of Animate that adds Zim features to Animate. Animate already has CreateJS and uh, now if you grab that zip file, we'll also have the Zim features which are built on CreateJS. That's why all of this works. Okay, so, uh, great, I've done that already. I have the zip file, you want to unzip that zip file and let's go into Animate and we'll take a look at um, what we're doing inside of Animate. Okay, so first of all, uh, rather than a canvas for instance, I'm going to go to more presets and choose the very high. The 1024 by 768 is usually what we work in. It's a default fit template in Zim because when we make something with Zim, it's often a full feature, as in it will be uh, scaled to the screen and that's what we're working in. You can also use tag modes and fit within, within tags in HTML. But anyway, we'll start with this very high one as opposed to the default one, which I think, I can't, can't remember, it's like 500 by 400 or something like that, which is a bit small. Okay, so I'm clicking very high here and hitting create. Oh, I've also adjusted the frame rate to 60 frames per second. So you might wanna do that too. And then I set that as the default. So it's 1024 by 768. Uh, rather than white, let's choose a stage color of uh, number sign. One, two, three, four, five, six E's, just so we can keep track of what the stage is versus the background uh, color of the HTML page. So there we go. Um, where we make the adjustments to bring in Zim now is in the publish settings right here. So we want to go to more settings and we want to go to the HTML and J JavaScript and we're importing a new template rather than working with the default template. So I'm gonna hit import new, and I've imported before, and it brings me to my Zim shim folder. So this is the uh, unzipped folder of the, the Zim shim, and in there are some examples, etc., of uh, working with images, physics, uh, full, full screen mode rather than um, a fit mode, uh, using data, etc. Zim shim is the one, this is just the basic Zim shim right here. This is an example of an output from the Zim shim. And if we weren't um, looking for an HTML template, you would see that in this zip folder, as well as an example FLA that you can open up and see all of this uh, being done as well. So anyway, I'm choosing the Zim shim. That's our HTML template. There's also Zim shim for physics, but we'll just get the basic Zim shim. And then that shows up here. What that means is when we go control enter or publish, um, it will publish with the, the added things that Zim added. Um, it's just a few extra things to the CreateJS stage, makes a Zim stage and um, brings in the Zim code. Okay, so that 
would be that, but what we might want to do, it's, it's up to you, is go in, uh, there's a couple other things here under basic that we might want to adjust. I'm going to center it, I'm going to make it responsive and scale to fit the, so that's our default fit mode in Zim, where this, this big rectangle of 1024 by 768 just fits inside whatever the browser window is, and it's kind of centered and fit within there. All right, so those are good. The HTML is good right there. And now what I'm gonna do is, I you would probably create a profile, I guess. Uh, I can create a profile, hopefully this will work. I'm gonna call it Zim. It might tell me I've already made one called that. No, it didn't, okay, so, great. There's my profile, Zim, said I am. And now I'm going to export the profile. For some reason, Adobe, like it's there now, but if I close down Flash and open it up again, it doesn't remember my, you know, I don't know, I've looked online and uh, it seems to be the situation. <laughs> so if there's some way to actually save that, that'd be great. I know there's a folder that you can put these in, put them in the folder and it still doesn't load it. So what I found though, is if you export it like this and they're, there's the one that I had previous exported. I'm going to say yes and overwrite that. Then when we make when we start again, we won't see this profile. Well, let's do it, shall we? So I've exported that profile. I close this down. I'm going to close the file here so we don't have anything again. And let's go through that process. So uh, it wasn't Canvas, but rather, I mean, you can use Canvas if you want, but I'm going to choose very high here and create. It saved my frame rate. I don't know, does that stage look white? Uh, well, oh, we have to go to our uh, profile up here. So that's under, so nothing's there. So you see what, it just for some reason goes away. I don't know why. So now we click on more settings. We could go through the whole HTML. Right now it's pub publishing to the default template, etc. But if we import a profile and import our Zim one, uh, okay, <laughs> it didn't look like it saved it. <laughs> Let's check again there. Now it's still publishing to the default template. It's like, okay, uh, I know that it, I know this works, so let's let's try it again. Um, import, it's just a bit finicky, I think. So we'll import Zim Shim. Did it save our basic stuff? No, it didn't save our basic stuff. It's like, come on, Adobe. All right, so we got that. Um, I'm going to, I don't know, hit OK maybe, and then go back and do it. Let's try again. So here, here we are under more settings. It's got the right HTML there. Great. The basics are all right. I'm going to hit export profile. Overwrite it. Yes. And hit OK. All right. Let's try it again. Close that down. No, I hope not. Anyway, and open it up again. Ready? File. Uh, new from template. I wonder what that does. Okay, those are different types of templates. Okay, so we choose our preset. I, I look for, by the way, the templates in there and it doesn't seem to have it. So here's the preset. Very high. We create. And let's have a look and see if it works this time. So that's not there, but we go import profile and choose the zim and this is all saved and the html is saved it's like, yay okay so sorry we had to do that twice that may happen to you too i'm not sure what it was maybe i didn't hit the okay or something like that but i think we're there now that's great um and what this means is if we go control enter control enter uh, we're now, it's going to open up an HTML page. It looks like it didn't quite save the color. Either that or, uh, and let's close that down. I closed all my HTML stage color. Hmm. Number sign. E, 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 E. e. One, that's one more. E, 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 E. There we go. Control enter. There's my stage color. Okay, so... Uh, we, we lost the saving of the stage colors. So see how the stage is slightly uh, gray there and the background's white? There must be some way to change the background color of that. Maybe you can do that in your 
template if you want, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it right now. So this is a Zim stage, and let's put something on there. So to put something on there, uh, of course, you know how to add movie clips and all that kind of stuff to it, and that would be fine too. But in, in this example, we're going to just open up some code. So F9 is our code. Or if you don't want to go F9, you can go window. Be, be, bo, be, bo, be, bo. Do you see it? Actions. Okay, that pulls up actions. I usually dock the actions up there, but I'll just leave it open here like this for now. Inside here, we can go, well, let's put a comment and we will call this uh, Zim. And we'll call it Zim01. So this is the Zim, uh, this is our first, our first uh, tutorial. So as we do our tutorials, I'll just put the number up there and maybe even a dash and we can call this template. Yay. All right, maybe with a capital T, there we go. Oh. So, oh, we, we do want to save this too. So file, let's save the file as something, save as, and I'm going to save it in tutorials as basically that zim underscore zero one underscore template. Okay, so it's always good to save your file before you control enter because then you can, uh, it doesn't go in some temporary file or something like that. So let's type some Zim. Are you ready? New circle. Yay. And we can give it a radius of 100 and make it red. And we will dot center that on the stage and we'll dot drag that or allow it to be draggable. Okay, so I've just saved that. This is a Zim object called a circle. All right, well, it's a class called circle. We're making an object from it. And there we are centering it on the stage and dragging it. So we go control enter. And now over here, we have a red circle that is centered on the stage. I have two monitors, so it's opening up my other monitor there. And that's the Zim template. Cool, yay, woohoo. We're all ready to go. Uh, note that that's off the stage like that. So there are other modes that would, you know, fill the whole page. But I find that this fit mode is a little bit easier to code with because we know dimensions as to where we're putting things. Otherwise, we have to sort of scale things. Zim's got a lot of um, parts to help scale. As a matter of fact, let's just go take a peek at, at Zim, uh, the docs for Zim. So once again, that's at zimjs.com. And then the docs are right up here. And this will tell us everything that we can do to make Zim. You well, you might be using pick, odd, and vid. I'm not sure to bring in those types of things. But if you've got Flash, most likely you will load those live into the IDE, like any pictures, et cetera, and sounds. And same with frames. So you don't need frames. So these things are often used when we're not using animate. Um, then we've got different display objects. So here's probably where we would start, although there's a container. We can make a movie clip as well, but you'll make the movie clips in Adobe Animate. There are sprites, which is a special way that we can animate. You may definitely be using sprites. Um, and shapes. So we don't tend to use the raw shapes all that much, but you're welcome to make shapes with code. Instead, we would use circle, rectangle, triangle, poly, line, squiggle, blob, flare, multi-flare, and flare box. Um, and, and then here are the bunch of the components, the labels, uh, emojis, buttons, check boxes, radio buttons, so lots and lots. And what you do is you open those up and you can see all the parameters to pass in there. It will then tell you about the parameters. It tells you about the methods. It tells you about the properties and the events along with various examples and, and the code underneath. So those are the components, radial menus, D-pads, uh, text editors, keyboards, marquees, etc. cetera. Um, then there are the methods which go on all of those that are short chainable methods. And those you saw us uh, adding center, that's a method, so there's the center. So there's all sorts of short chainable methods that allow us to work with that, including there's our drag, for instance. Um, we can wire things up, which is an alternative way to do events. There's transforms, there's gestures. Um, we've got all sorts of hit tests, uh, different ways to animate and wiggle things, uh, lots of scaling stuff. Uh, then a bunch of controls. So pages to go from page to page. Wrappers allow us to um, 
uh, squeeze stuff and have it wrap uh, on the canvas, which is handy. Tiles, beads, etc. These are some of the things that we'll go through in the tutorials and the upcoming tutorials and various effects as well. Blur effects, uh, flippers, parallax, emitters, dynamos, which are dynamic uh, sprites, the generator, the pen, sound wave, synth, VR, and then coding help, things that help us with code like RAND and loop and so forth. All right, uh, there are helper libraries down here. There's a game library with leaderboards and uh, isometric boards. There's three bringing in 3D with 3JS, socket server stuff for multi-user, uh, webcam, animating to webcam, or uh, like uh, as you wave your hand, it, it things will follow the mouse, and pizzazz to make various shapes and stuff. But you can use Adobe Animate for that. This is when we don't use Adobe Animate. Um, some of that will, will come in helpful. So all that is the Zim Docs back at uh, the Docs section right there. And just popping back in, uh, that's where you would also find your parameters. The next one is the border color. So if we make it a dark, these are Zim colors. If we make it a dark color of five or something like that and save that up, control enter, and we now have a border uh, on that circle. Uh, maybe just to wet your whistle, just to see, you know, what's coming up. I want, I'll comment that out, but let me just show you the blob. And for instance, a new blob, uh, not a Boolean, but a blob. And we'll dot center that and let's have a look. Uh, I can't just refresh that. I control enter and here is a blob. And again, this is this is editable so that you can change the blob to look like different shapes, drag it around. And there are various settings for a blob. You can make a blob that isn't editable, but there we go. <laughs> Dr. Abstract's head. Okay, so you get the idea and we'll come back and we'll do more tutorials on how to use Zim in there. Let's just delete that and we'll we'll save these out. <laughs> not much, not much to this one, uh, but as you can see. Uh, that's excellent. And if you wanted to, if this were a circle that you made in Adobe Animate, then you can center it and drag it, but you'll have a reference to this dot circle or whatever. So anything that's on the stage would be this dot circle if you've given it that name, and then dot center and dot drag. There are a few tricks to do with that as well, one called Zimify. So you need to Zimify your objects for that to work. Um, that's all shown in the, D, in the FLA that comes with the zip file, but we'll go over that stuff in the next tutorials. Okay, so I am Dr. Abstract. It's been a delight to, to be with you here, um, showing you through Zim, Zim Shim for Adobe Animate. Look forward to doing more of them. Have a great day or night, and once again, come visit us at zimjs.com slash slack. Probably the best place to talk about Animate. But you're also welcome to talk to us in zimjs.com slash discord. Cheers. See you later.